How's it going, everybody? Timmy D here with Backstage 360, and I'm sitting with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Pat Travers. How are you doing today? Doing well, it's sir. Awesome to see you and meet you, bro. I would say, how are you doing? But you're here, you're shining, and you're ready yeah, to rock. I'm feeling so, good. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, let's get right into it. New record that you're working on. So you got some new guitars getting made. Let's talk some shop about that. Right. Um, I've, I have, I've decided that I'm really not going to make albums anymore of my own material because it just is too lengthy and costly a process. And in the end, it, it, it just doesn't work. So I would rather just concentrate on two or three songs or maybe four. Well, I've got more now, but which I have. I have three really great songs. And so uh, we're going to record those uh, next week or the week after. And uh, then I want to uh, create really interesting YouTube videos to promote these songs. So something artistic. And, and really, it's, it's just the way to do it these days. You don't need a record company. Absolutely. You just, you know, you record the stuff and don't and for me, I was always, you know, always this pressure of, you know, in the old days, it was eight songs I had to come up yeah. with for an album, right? And then CDs came out, and now they wanted 12, yeah. and in some cases, 14, and I'm like, ah! So I said, no more, I'm not going to do that. So I am in that position and about to record those songs and release them myself over, uh, you know, just over the time. Uh, but here's the other recording project I'm doing, and this one is a lot of fun. Uh, Cleopatra Records. I've done some albums for them, and uh, they asked me to do an album, and I just told I told them what I just told you. I'm not doing any more albums. Fresh. You know, no, well, I'm not. Fresh, but... No, I'm not doing twelve songs. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I said I'll do five, maybe, right? And then they said, well. And I said it would have to be a theme, you know. In other words, I'm not going to write a bunch of songs for this album because and, and, it's just too much to do. So then I thought, you know what I've always wanted to do is cover 40s big band swing. So I said, all right, I'll do eight songs if it's 40s big band swing. And they went, oh, that's great. You can get some special guests on there, which they said they pay for too. So. I, I will start recording that uh, next week or the week after. Uh, half that album I'm going to just do with my trio with Tommy and David, and then the other half I'm going to do uh, with a proper uh, upright bass, piano, horns, nice. and uh, a, a drummer who's familiar with all those original styles. And the cool thing is, listening to this material, most of the lead lines are uh, like sax or clarinet lines, and they're all in the same register as the middle of the neck on a guitar. So it's the you know it's already in the right register uh, sonically. So, and it's just so much fun um, learning all these different types of modulations, and you know, which at first you go, oh man, that's really jazzy. I'll never know that. But once you figure out the 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 sequence the pattern it's like oh uh, yeah. uh, that's just a cool thing to do you know Absolutely. so um is there a certain um, like in the standards that you've been looking through and yes it's 40s big band but 40s big band kind of revolved around like anything from the roaring 20s in that art deco area or era you, you know okay that's interesting uh there really is quite a difference between the 20s and the 40s oh, yeah. the 20s was a crazy time in america it was i mean everybody was hyped the 30s were the hangover 40s unfortunately were world war ii so yeah. there was all of that going on and the the, the big bands almost by design had a, a, a kind of a tone and the recordings themselves that for the home people, the people not fighting the war, yeah. you know, it, the whole thing was soothing and calming in an interesting way, but had a lot of energy and, and some really hot players. Like they were really, would have been the Eddie Van Halens and, uh, and uh, the Hendrixes 
like Harry James on his trumpet was amazing and, and uh, some of these sax players and this guy uh, Ray Anthony was just amazing so they were the hot players and so though all their tunes were mostly just instrumental and that's pretty much what I'm going after okay yeah is there so any like Glenn Miller stuff or any of that Yeah, in the mood I'm doing um, I think I've been listening I get them all mixed up now um, I'm trying to not do two from one artist so I I know Glenn Miller there's this other song called uh, uh, well sing 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 which a lot of bands did uh, but I think it was, I don't know if it was Glenn Miller, but that one's interesting. That's the one that starts with the drums. Yeah. yeah. Boop, 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 we actually boop, saw, you know, we saw fucking awesome. that up in Newport Beach, we saw them do Sing, Sing, Sing. Yeah. And that, that's an epic tune. That oh, really I know. Oh, so man. I'm doing that three piece. Mm -hmm. That's Johnny Mathis. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to, I, you know, now obviously you look at that and you go, oh, you need a whole bunch of horns. And originally that was going to be one of the horn ones, but then I started working on it at home and I started out going, yeah, we can just grab, there's like one or two main sort of things in there and all the rest of it is just, saw, you know, just accoutrement. Yeah. So I'm going to strip it down to, you know, Les Paul or Strat and bass and drums. So Is there, yeah, I know you yeah, guys have sorry. coming up. So, um, so you got that record coming out with, uh, and I say record only because yeah, no, you I call it a, re it's a recording. It's a recording. Yeah. First time so I met. Record uh, is short for recording. It's his name. Did uh, Don Was, you know who Don yeah, Was is? Don Was. He's Super nice producer, guy. Um, Bonnie Raitt. Awesome dude. Uh, he produced uh, all kinds of people, but yeah, Bobby and Ray, he was amazing. And he played bass too. He's a great bass refer, player. That was the first time I heard him refer to a record one recording as a record. He's yeah. like, that's a great record, man. He was like listening to one of my tunes. That's a great record, man. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, it's so, just short for recording. But yeah. Cleopatra Records will be they are the underwriters of this and they're kind of giving yeah. you the carte blanche on yeah, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They don't uh, no, they I tell them what I plan to do, and they send me money, and I get it done, and they're always happy with the result, and every couple of years they ask me to do something again. So if it fits with my schedule and is interesting, and not too many songs, then I'll do it, which in this case. And everybody, I'm not having any trouble getting people to play on this, because it's, oh, yeah, I want to do that, yeah, you know. Let's get, yeah. let's do something different. Well, Mr. Pat Travers, it's been a pleasure right, talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Mr. Pat Travers here again for Backstage 360. And for Mr. Pat Travers, my name's Timmy D. Rock and roll. Keep moving forward.